Mauritian sugar producer Omnicane is set to set up a new division, Omnicane Ethanol, which has been created to acquire Alcadis. The company has also been experimenting with a wind farm in Britannia since 2009. Now joining us to explain more about the company's operations and expansion plans is Jacques Dunenville from Omnicane. Jacques, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'd like to get straight into it because you've been, you know, since the, uh, the new regulations have come in, you have diversified but you've done quite a number of things over the past 10 years if we look you're a sugar producer uh, sugar transformer or an, an energy operator I mean which of these do you fall under yes uh, thank you very much uh, indeed our company has been diversifying quite a lot recently mainly uh, as a result of the e EU sugar reform uh, which resulted into a massive centralization of firstly our milling operations in Mauritius. So basically uh, we converted let's say eight mills into one uh, which then enabled us first of all to besides being a sugar producer being an important power producer for the country our company now produces around 30 percent of the country's electricity needs, uh, a substantial part of it out of bagasse, which is the fiber of the sugar cane. Uh, more recently, we've also invested in a refinery uh, in order to transform the raw sugar into white sugar for direct consumption to be exported straight to the final EU consumers. Okay, well, uh, we are also uh, by yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Jacques, I just wanted to talk about um, you know, eth Omnicane ethanol has been set up to acquire uh, Alcadis, but up to this stage, we, we still haven't seen it being transferred to your site, and the regulation is still, uh, you know, with regards to the E10 for the use of, eth of ethanol, uh, the mix for it for the, uh, for the motor vehicles. Uh, there's no clarity on that. Would you not agree that this was a rather a risky you know, um, operation that you embarked on? Well, um, first of all, it is a very logical operation for us because uh, an important part of, of sugarcane uh, after transformation is molasses. And in order to get the most value out of molasses, ethanol and alcohol is the logic way to go. Uh, so far, we've done a lot of progress in terms of legislation in Mauritius, uh, but we haven't yet uh, had an established policy of mixing it with petrol here but we're working with the authorities to do it in the meantime we have an offtake agreement with uh, Alco who is a huge uh, ethanol uh, importer in Europe now let's talk about your, um, you know, your expansion or your experiment with Britannia since 2009 over the past four years you know the, the results have been satisfactory but what's the next step now So, um, yeah, uh, over the, the, past, the past four years, we've concentrated mainly on diversifying our activities in Mauritius. The, the next thing we're looking forward to do now is to go for expansion mainly on mainland Africa. Uh, we are now embarked on a project in Kenya, uh, which is a sugar complex currently being built. Uh, where we are managing the sugar complex and we also have a 25% equity stake uh, in it. We are planning to start operations by uh, mid of next year. Now tell us Jacques, what is the maximum capacity that the region would be able to support? Uh, so the, the maximum capacity of what, what is the maximum capacity that that region would be able to support? Okay, well, the, the region uh, basically uh, is, uh, has a deficit of sugar. Like, for example, in the SADC region, there, there are uh, many deficit countries. So uh, there is room for uh, further expansion in, in the sugar business and uh, in electricity as well. 
So, for example, in Kenya, the, the sugar deficit is over 250,000 tons per year. Now, you, 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 know, you have your fingers in quite a lot of parts when it comes to uh, bringing energy online. We're looking at you know, ethanol, uh, thermal electric power generation, and we also have wind farms. But at the end of the day, when you're operating at full capacity, um, how much importation of gas will you be able to spare from this? Well, um, the, what we want to achieve is at least to substitute 10% of uh, gasoline imports uh, of Mauritius through ethanol. Uh, in full capacity, we could go up to 20%. But that might be, there might be some technical problems to that. But we're very confident that to substitute 10% is very feasible for Mauritius. So tell us, where else would you be looking t um, on expanding uh, on the continent other than Mauritius at the moment? Yes, we have a, a project, as I told you, going on in Kenya. Uh, we are looking into uh, putting a hydroelectric project in Rwanda. Uh, and we're looking at other regional countries for, for expansion, like countries like Mozambique, for example. Now tell us, Jacques, you know, energy projects such as these are, are quite expensive. I mean, how, what's the funding mechanism uh, for these types of projects? Well, we've used a lot of uh, project finance, so, uh, which implies uh, a relatively small amount of equity and a big amount of debt, which is itself secured on the project. Uh, as far as our equity part uh, is concerned, uh, over the last year, we've uh, raised bonds uh, here in Mauritius. So we have, um, we've had a multi-currency uh, facility of uh, 100 million dollars out of which we've raised uh, two tranches out of three uh, for the time being and it's been very very successful they both have been oversubscribed 